Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Memorial Day. Today, we celebrate Memorial Day in this country, and what a very beautiful way to honor the men and women, the heroes and the hero heroines of our country that have fought in many battles. You know, when I think of the men and women who have died fighting for our country, our freedom, and all the branches of service, I know in my heart that they entered into this branch of service, whatever it was, for peace. It's all about peace and harmony. Don't you want to live in peace and harmony every day of your life? So do I. I want to live in peace and harmony every day of my life. I want to live in peace and harmony with God and with one another. I don't want to be enemies with any person, group, anyone that's different from me. I think we need to agree that we disagree and we need to respect each other as human beings gifted by God and graced by God. That's what it's all about. It's about peace and harmony. It's about justice and love. But that's easier said than done. It gets complicated, doesn't it? But we don't have to make it so complicated. We have to recognize in our own life what needs to be done that is proper, good, holy, and just. And we need to strive for that, individually and as a country. Today, as we pray for these men and women and for the families they left behind, perhaps children, their grandchildren, nieces and nephew, spouses, it's a difficult moment for many people, especially when we don't always see people respecting these United States and what it stands for. But let's not at all be upset today. Today, let us focus on prayer. Let us focus on praying for the dead, respecting them, because we don't want our anger to dip into today, do we? We don't want our anger to dip into today. We want to respect these people who have made the ultimate sacrifice by stopping, by praying. So would you pray today if you have not already done so? Would you pray for all the men and the women who have fought for our country for the sake of freedom and have given their lives? I could almost kind of imagine the people who are so young, 18 years old, going into branches of service. Yes, there were some that were drafted, but how about those people who just go into the branches of service? Why do they do that? Why do they choose to serve our country in that capacity? Well, they do it for the sake of freedom. They do it for the ideas of what we stand for as a country. They do it to protect you and me from anyone who would want to harm us and our values. And as I said that Jesus teaches us to stand firm, don't move. Don't be afraid of people when they give you a, a shot here and a shot there. Don't move. Stand your ground. Fight for what you believe is right, good, just, and holy. And how beautiful that conquering of the ideas will be established and promoted. Yes, today is about peace and justice. So when you pray today, 
you're thinking of these men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice for peace, right? So what is peace? Not just the absence of war, because none of them applied to do this for that. They did it for a generalization of peace and what that stands for. Harmony with all people, even when we disagree with them. But to say, you know, this is what we believe in. We're drawing the line in the sand. This is what we believe in. And we're holding these values to be self-evident. That all people are created equal. And we stand for these truths in which you and I know that this land was established. You know, we're all citizens of these United States, right? We're citizens, we're U.S. citizens. And there has to be in us a love for the country. And if there's something that the country is not doing right, and there's a few things, and you probably know what I'm thinking about, then exercise your freedom to vote. To make sure that people are placed in government positions that will change so that the ideas of why this land was ever put here would be put for the good of all. But we have to respect one another. What I find happening now is a complete disrespect for perhaps government leaders, disrespect for the flag, disrespect for what it stands for. I understand that people may be offended by, you know, this policy, that policy, this law, that law. Okay, I understand that. I'm one of them. But what do I do to make sure that that's changed? I have a responsibility. It's called civil responsibility. You know, it's a moral issue as well. It's just not because I, I'm a citizen of the U.S. As a Catholic Christian and as a priest, I have a moral obligation to make sure that what is immoral is stopped. And I have to do everything in my power to make sure that that's happened, that happens. The first thing I have to pray then I have to vote. And I have to also talk and preach so that others may understand the values that are good, wholesome, and just in which our Constitution promotes. <laughs> I believe that I'm an essential worker. Thank God the President does. He believes that priests, pastors, ministers, our rabbis are essential workers. Remember, it's always both body and soul. It's not just body. I think you, you and I have a spiritual body called a soul. Somebody has to take care of it. Someone has to help you. Just like you, you take care of your physical body, but somebody has to help you. Doctors, right? First responders, they're wonderful. Wonderful first responders. Healthcare workers, essential workers, but I do believe that clergy are also essential workers. And slowly we'll be getting into the yellow phase. But today is really about them, about the men and women who have made that ultimate sacrifice for our country, our freedom, and what it stands for. So let's respect them by respecting our country. Don't you think that's a good idea to start with? To respect the, the dead who fought for the country and what it stands for. So in honoring them, we need to really show respect to the country and the branches that it serves. You know, all of us need to do that. The flag, the constitution, the president. You may not like him, you may not like what he says, but I think we have to respect the office. 
respect the office, respect individuals. Jesus always told us that, didn't he? To respect one another. In fact, the entire gospel is based on love one another as I have loved you. So, everybody, you know, I'm commanded by Jesus to love you. I might not like what you do, right? But I have to love you. And that's something that we have to always remember. I may not like what someone does. I might not agree with them, but I'm called to love them. And ultimately to bring them to justice. Because bringing people to justice is for the common good. These men and women whom we honor today that have given the ultimate sacrifice of their lives did it for peace and justice. To hold together the, the, the heritage that is ours in integrity of peace and justice and for what it stands for. As we celebrate Memorial Day 2020 during this pandemic, it's different. But let this difference get a time for us to think about it. What, what do I think about our country? How do I show respect to the country? How do I show respect to the Constitution, the flag, and the president, and those people who serve us? And maybe I don't particularly care for some things. Absolutely, I understand that. What are we going to do about it? See, these men and women stood up to the plate to do something about it as well. I'm sure these men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice of their life, not everything was A-OK -okay in their mind with the United States, but they probably said to themselves, you know what? I'm stepping up to the plate. I'm gonna make a difference. I'm not gonna talk about it. I'm gonna do something about it. And that's what they did. And the way that I show my love and respect to all these men and women on this Memorial Day is first to pray for them, to offer Mass, and to remember as I offer the perpetual memorial of the Lord's passion and death, I remember this memorial. As I remember the Lord who gave us freedom by opening the gates of heaven by his death on the cross, I remember these men and women in this Memorial Day as they have given me freedom to be in these United States. I think as a priest, I should talk about local government, and I think I should talk about areas of freedom in our country in the sense that, no, I'm not a politician, I'm a pastor, but I have to render to Caesar what is Caesar, and I have to render to God what is God. As long as Caesar does not interfere with the law of God. Jesus told us that. These men and women, I'm sure most of them are men and women of faith. They believe in God. And they stood for those principles that God, who has given that freedom, as our forefathers have told us, ultimately, that we have to allow that expression of God's freedom and God's love to perpetuate in our lives and what we stand for. Listen, I would be naive if I would say to you, not everything that we have done in our country has been 
always on those values and those ideas. I understand that. But my point is, today, what are we called to do? We're called to pray for those who have served. We are to honor them by respecting the branches of government. Isn't this beautiful? I thank the ladies who did this. The uh, branches of government in which they served. You see the little medallions on the top of the wreaths? Really, really nice. And the sacrifices they made. So let us conclude. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls and all the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. May Almighty God give them eternal rest, O Lord. God bless them, and God bless America. Happy Memorial Day, everyone.